The Story of Apple and the Macintosh by Mac and Computer Help. Something different. The Macintosh was the first computer of its kind. It was affordable and yet easy to use. The computer was no longer just for scientists and engineers, but for the everyday person. The Macintosh changed the personal computer forever. The Birth of Steve Jobs Steve Jobs was born in San Francisco on February 24, 1955. Paul and Claire Jobs adopted him just weeks after his birth and gave him the name Stephen Paul Jobs. As Jobs was growing up, he had quite a few neighbors who would tinker with electronics in their garages. He was never afraid to ask questions and learn much from these experiences. It was in these neighbors' garages where he first became interested in electronics. By 13, he was making electronic devices himself truly knowing technology. Steve Jobs would often go to lectures at the Hewlett Packard Company after school and was soon employed there. There he met and worked with Steve Wozniak, who became a good friend of his. They spent increasingly more time together at the Homebrew Computer Club. This club was for electronic enthusiasts who would meet and talk about computers and electronics. When the Altair 8800, the first personal computer, was released in 1975, the members of the Homebrew Computer Club were very interested in it. Steve Jobs was not just interested, but he wanted to create a personal computer of his own. Start of Apple Computer In 1976, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak started Apple Computer in Jobs' garage. With very little money, they made their first computer, the Apple I. Shortly after the release of the Apple I, Jobs and Wozniak started working on the Apple II. The Apple II was different from the Apple I because it had a built-in keyboard, was in a stylish plastic case, and was the first computer with a built-in floppy disk drive. It was very successful in computer circles, but these circles were not too big. The major problem with the Apple II was the fact of limited software. The Apple II needed a program that would draw more users, and this program was VisiCalc. VisiCalc. VisiCalc was a spreadsheet program that allowed a person to enter a group of numbers, edit one, and the final answer would change. This program made the Apple II the best-selling computer in the world. While all this was happening, IBM had stayed out of the personal computer business. However, as they saw the market growing, they decided to introduce their own PC. The IBM PC soon became the fastest-selling personal computer. It did so well because businessmen trusted the IBM name, and it was a large com company unlike the small Apple computer. Steve Jobs knew he needed something completely new to compete with IBM. He did not receive help from Wozniak, as he was in an accident and was no longer interested in the day-to-day -day operations. The brilliant new ideas that Steve Jobs needed came from Xerox. Xerox. Xerox had a place called Xerox Park, or Palo Alto Research Center. This was a place that had brilliant computer scientists that were told to build the office of the future. These scientists had the freedom to, cr to create new ideas and technologies without any pressure to manufacture or sell anything. As a result, they came up with some revolutionary ideas. In 1979, Jobs and some other engineers from Apple went to Xerox Park. While they were there, they saw a computer called the Xerox Auto. The Xerox Auto featured the world's first graphical user interface or GUI. With this interface, you used a mouse and clicked on icons instead of just typing in commands. Steve Jobs now knew how his next computer would be different from all the others. Lisa The Lisa was Apple's first computer with a graphical user interface. Originally, Apple did not intend for the Lisa to have next generation features, but at the beginning of the Lisa's development was when Jobs and other Apple engineers went to Xerox. After seeing the new technologies, they included them in the Lisa. The Lisa had a built-in display, keyboard, and a one-button mouse. Even though the Lisa had new features and was easier to use than other computers, it failed to take off. Some reasons it failed was incompatibility and the price. The price was not practical at $9,995 for a household computer, and the incompatibility to other computers drew away businessmen. Beginning of the Macintosh Jobs was on the Lisa team, but he was kicked off after he became impatient and started making people crazy. He then started working on the Macintosh. He said the Macintosh would be insanely great. The Macintosh was a research project at first, 
did not have a high profile like the Lisa. After Jobs took over though, the computer became a cheaper kind of Lisa instead of a super cheap computer with a text-based interface. Lisa versus Macintosh. Steve Jobs created competition between the, between the Lisa and Apple II teams and the Macintosh. He made the developers feel like pirates and pushed them to, be, to come up with new revolutionary ideas. He also made his Macintosh, feel, Macintosh team feel better than everyone else at Apple. Because of this competition, there was a zealous push to accomplish the development of the Macintosh. At one point, Jobs gave out t-shirts to his team that read 90 hours a week and loving it. Even with the strong drive to finish the Macintosh, it more than once missed its launch date. The Macintosh released. The Macintosh was introduced to the world on January 22, 1984, during the third quarter of Super Bowl 18. This commercial was later named the best commercial of all time. It showed a group of workers hypnotized by their leader on the screen. All of a sudden, a female athlete being chased by stormtroopers comes into the room. She throws a sledgehammer at the screen, destroying it and the leader's face. The idea was the Macintosh could rescue people from boring technology. The Macintosh represented freedom, and IBM represented oppression. Demo of the Macintosh The debut demonstration for the Macintosh was at the Flint Center Auditorium of Cupertino College, in 1984, Job showed off his masterpiece with great pride by displaying hello in a curvy script on the screen. Then he showed off the graphical user interface featuring simple pull-down menus and icons. Jobs just clicked on what he wanted on screen and did not have to type in cryptic computer commands. Demo of the Macintosh continued. The Macintosh also featured an all-in-one design, bright display, and used a mouse for input. Inside the Macintosh was the hardware and technology, which used to cost over $10,000, now for only $2,495. This made it reasonable for the middle class to afford. This lower price and advanced technology gained its praise and support from the public and media, but was criticized on the lack of expandability and was not compatible with existing software. Another major problem was it did not attract businesses. Businesses were the key to business. Businesses brought more computer, bought more computers than anyone else at this time. And the Macintosh came with a low quality printer. This printer could not print well enough for most businesses and there were not many programs for the Macintosh either. One reason for limited software was because only Apple could make Macintoshes, not just anyone. The IBM PC was assembled with parts that anyone could obtain because anyone could obtain the computer parts and because Microsoft sold their operating system to many companies, not just IBM, Microsoft became the standard platform. Businesses were the key to business, continued. Most programmers created software for the standard, and that was not the Macintosh. One thing the Macintosh did not have over other personal computers was its operating system. Its OS was years ahead and much simpler to use than Microsoft's. The problem was people buying computers did not need a friendly OS, but needed all the software available for Microsoft's operating system. The Macintosh did, although, have a lot more success than the Lisa, for it was affordable to the average consumer. The sales were strong right after the release and got to 70,000 units sold on May 3, 1984, yet after this point their sales began to decrease. Definition of Macintosh Revolutionary with a reasonable price and an easy-to-use user interface, the Macintosh forever changed the personal computer. The Macintosh brought the graphical user interface to the everyday person. Now you could just point and click on what you wanted and did not need to type in cryptic commands.